Honestly, were you that surprised about this? Flight 8's launch date has just been adjusted, and it's facing a slight delay compared to the original schedule. So when is the new launch date, and what's causing the delay? Meanwhile, SpaceX continues to push boundaries, hitting major milestones with the Falcon rocket and Starlink, further solidifying its dominance in the space industry. But on the other hand, the James Webb Space Telescope is now facing the threat of significant budget cuts. What does all of this mean for the future of space exploration? Let's dive right on in on today's episode of Great SpaceX to find out. Just a few days ago, no one could have imagined that Flight 8 was so close, and now the anticipation surrounding its launch is at an all-time high. The most recent update, especially from the FAA, had initially set February 26th as the primary launch date. While there were backup dates in place, many had pinned their hopes on a Wednesday afternoon launch. However, a slight delay means we'll have to wait just a little longer. According to an update from SpaceX CEO Elon Musk, the flight is now scheduled for Friday the 28th, which falls within the previously announced backup window just two days later than originally planned. The FAA's previous NOTAM indicated a launch window beginning at 5.30pm Central, and it's likely that this new date will not affect that timing. This means that the carefully planned observation conditions will remain unchanged, giving us the best possible view of both stages as they attempt their respective landings. So why was the launch pushed back by two days? The most likely reason lies in the progress of Starship's hardware preparation. Currently, both stages, S-34 and B-15, are still at the production site. For S-34, final installations, including the flight termination system, are likely being completed. Additionally, the payload dispenser and simulated Starlink satellites appear to be in the process of being installed. The situation with B-15, however, has been more unpredictable. The hot staging ring, which initially arrived at Mega Bay 1 and was believed to have been installed on the 19th, was unexpectedly sent back to Star Factory on the morning of the 21st. Then, on the 23rd, it returned to Mega Bay, only to be sent back to Star Factory a few hours later. This back-and-forth movement suggests that its installation has not yet been finalized. Meanwhile, its FTS system remains at the launch site, likely awaiting later installation. With these updates in mind, it's clear that the Starship stages are not yet ready for integration testing at the launch site. After this testing phase, additional checks will need to be conducted before the vehicle can be cleared for launch. Given these outstanding tasks, the short delay seems necessary to give SpaceX enough time to complete all required preparations. While work continues on S-34 and B-15, SpaceX has been making significant progress on other systems. The launch infrastructure is undergoing constant testing, with the chopsticks mechanism being put through rigorous lifting, lowering, opening, and closing tests to ensure it's fully operational. Additional cladding has been installed, and pumps for the tank farm system are being brought in to strengthen the fuel loading infrastructure. Every indication points to a steady march toward launch readiness. Outside of SpaceX, other agencies are also making their final preparations. Cameron County has issued road closure notices for flight activity on the 28th, aligning with the new launch date. Additional NOTAMs have been released, detailing the designated landing zone for ship in the Indian Ocean, as well as navigational warnings being issued accordingly. Observation ships have been consistently departing from the port, ready to monitor and support the mission. Despite the slight delay, the excitement surrounding this launch remains as strong as ever, and it's thrilling to see it taking place on the final day of February. This determination from SpaceX signals an ambitious year ahead, filled with rapid-fire launches and continued progress. If Flight 8 lifts off on the 28th, it'll mark a turnaround of just 43 days since Flight 7, demonstrating an impressive increase in launch frequency. The delay may be disappointing for some, but the wait will be worth it. The pieces are coming together, and SpaceX is inching closer to another milestone in its ambitious Starship program. So, if you're still eagerly anticipating this launch, let me know by responding, I'm still waiting. And while you're at it, like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date with SpaceX's journey toward revolutionizing spaceflight. With the latest updates on Starship wrapped up, let's shift our focus to improve to the impressive milestones achieved by SpaceX's other systems, Falcon 9 and Starlink. On February 21st, SpaceX reached another significant achievement with the Falcon rocket, 
At precisely 10.19 a.m. Eastern, a Falcon 9 launched from SLC-40, carrying another batch of satellites into orbit. But the real highlight of this mission was its booster, B-1076, which successfully completed its 21st landing. This marked the 99th successful touchdown on the A Short Fall of Gravitas drone ship and brought SpaceX's total booster landings to an astounding 411. However, the biggest milestone of the day wasn't just about one booster. It was about the entire Falcon fleet. This mission officially marked the 450th flight of the Falcon rocket family which includes 439 Falcon 9 launches and 11 Falcon Heavy launches. This moment was met with enthusiasm across the space community. SpaceX celebrated the occasion on X with a simple yet powerful statement. Falcon completes its 450th mission. Meanwhile, Musk emphasized the achievement with his own post, 450 Falcon flights. This milestone is yet another testament to Falcon's dominance in the industry. SpaceX continues to set the standard pushing far ahead of its competitors, including China, which ranks second in total launches. Thanks to its high-frequency launch capability, the Falcon rocket family has established a reliable, cost-effective launch system that maintains an unmatched level of flexibility. With competitive pricing and an unparalleled launch cadence, SpaceX has created an enormous gap between its technology and that of other launch providers and they're just getting started. SpaceX has set an ambitious goal of completing 180 Falcon flights this year. If they stay on track, the company could soon reach 500 or even 600 total Falcon launches, solidifying its place in history. The pace of launches also contributes to increasing records in booster reuse, further proving the cost-effectiveness and sustainability of the Falcon fleet. One of the biggest beneficiaries of Falcon 9's continued success is, of course, Starlink. The majority of Falcon launches are dedicated to deploying these satellites, expanding the reach and capability of SpaceX's satellite internet network. Just one day after Falcon's 450th mission, SpaceX launched yet another batch of Starlink satellites. At 8.38 p.m. Eastern on the 22nd, a Falcon 9 lifted off from SLC-4E in California. This mission's booster, B-1082, successfully completed its 11th landing, marking the 121st successful touchdown on the Of Course I Still Love You drone ship and SpaceX's 412th Falcon booster landing overall. This launch brought another 22 Starlink satellites into orbit, pushing SpaceX past yet another milestone. Over 8,000 Starlink satellites launched to date. While some satellites have been deorbited or failed, the number of active satellites in orbit is now well over 7,000. And with the company's rapid launch schedule, it won't be long before Starlink reaches the milestone of 8,000 operational satellites in orbit. Starlink is quickly becoming a dominant force in low Earth orbit, revolutionizing global connectivity. It provides high-speed, low-latency internet access to customers worldwide, including remote areas where traditional systems fail to reach. Additionally, Starlink has proven itself invaluable in emergency situations, such as natural disasters and wartime operations. Its effectiveness was demonstrated last year during Hurricanes Milton and Helene, where it played a crucial role in restoring communication for affected regions. Beyond Earth, Starlink is also set to play a major role in supporting future space missions, as evidenced by its planned use in the upcoming Polaris Dawn mission. Show your support by commenting, Let's Go SpaceX, and stay tuned for even more groundbreaking achievements in the near future. And now for our final update of this episode. The James Webb Space Telescope has been in operation for four years, originally launched in 2021, solidifying its place as the most important observatory for space exploration. Its innovative discoveries have revolutionized our understanding of the universe. But despite its success, it may now be facing a substantial budget cut, potentially up to 20% of its current funding. This concerning development was recently revealed by the telescope's overseeing team, who stated that NASA has directed them to reduce operational costs, even as demand for observations continues to rise. At the 245th American Astronomical Society meeting in National Harbor, Maryland, Tom Brown, leader of the Webb Mission Office at the Space Telescope Science Institute, 
addressed these looming financial challenges. He stated, NASA is having budget constraints across the entire board, so the Institute is being asked to consider a significant, about 20%, cut to our operational budget for the mission starting later this year. So the impacts of that, if it comes to pass, pretty much cut across the entire mission. This year, NASA has allocated $317 million for the combined operations of James Webb, Hubble, and Chandra telescopes. However, these budget reductions are not exclusive to Webb. Hubble is also facing funding constraints, while the Chandra X-ray Observatory appears to be approaching the end of its mission. Future cuts could become even more drastic, with Chandra's budget expected to drop to $41.1 million this year and potentially plummet to just $5.2 million by 2029. Brown, speaking at another conference, expressed deep concerns about the situation. Frankly, this mission works far better than, really, most folks expected it to, you know? It's extremely worrisome that, while we're in the middle of the prime mission, we're also maybe looking at significant budget cuts, he said. He emphasized that this is not a minor reduction, but a severe financial hit that could affect every aspect of Webb's operations, stating, It's a huge cut. That's not like kind of trying to nibble away at the edges. That's, that impacts everything across the board, all the way up to how many modes we're offering to the observers. While cost-cutting is often necessary to prevent inefficient spending, reducing funding for James Webb at this stage must be carefully considered. Unlike Hubble, which has been in service for 35 years, Webb is still in its prime, continuously delivering valuable insights into the universe. What are your thoughts on this budget reduction? Do you think these cuts are justified, or should NASA prioritize keeping James Webb fully funded? Let's discuss in the comments. This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.